All right, hey, welcome in. Blood on the streets, ladies and gentlemen. The NASDAQ is down 3.77%. The e is down 3.14. AD is a weak negative 430. As we look at it, it's been going down, 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 down. Now we're at lunchtime chop. Seems to be going up just a bit. We're below the overnight low. We're below the 15-minute uh, opening range. We are below everything. So guess what it is. And the cool thing is, I mean, this is not – catching anybody by surprise. We knew that days were going to, mama always said there'd be days like this. Mama said there'd be days like this. And um, so I hope this didn't catch anybody by surprise. Remember, we kind of thought that kind of a good size correction would come at the end of 2021. It never did. So we're not surprised at all this, that we're getting a little bit of a correction here in uh, 2022. So let's just look at our Big green monster, and just show you what it kind of looks like. Everybody, please mute. I've got a mute all button for some reason. It doesn't look like it's working. Let's look at our e-minis here. <gasps> oh, behave! We've fallen off the big green monster. We are down below that. So what do you do? Well, we take the big green monster and we duplicate it. Let's see if we can do this really quick. Line. Duplicate it, and then we drag her down. Drag her down into the abyss. Let's see, and fix it like so. That looks good right about there. So now we've got, let's see, we went from oversold to overbought to a fair value range, and then we are oversold. So oversold for this fair value range wouldn't surprise us to see some type of support here at that area. And then a bounce back into this 50% area here. And hopefully, hey, 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 daddy's in session. The kids are out. You know why the kids are out? Because Beth's eat up with the COVID. Oh, yeah. But, and I won't say this in front of her, because I have the superior DNA, I have not quite. Uh, what'd you say, Beth? What? I'll have it in two days if I don't want to. But so far... Because I take zinc and vitamin C and all kind of stuff that Ken's got me on, I've been holding up really well. And Beth's doing good too. That's why I married a much younger woman. She got good teeth, she got good back, she got good feet, uh, looking good. So I think she's gonna pull through just fine. Uh, let's see. Thanks for uploading the Naked Express. She easier to begin. Yeah, I'm glad that y'all got it. Yeah, I'm in Georgia. Saw 12 p.m. Had a small heart attack. I have a meeting at 12. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Good. So hopefully we'll be finished by, I think, Zach, you're saying 12 central time. Yeah, I'm definitely in Georgia. But with all these ungodly Bulldog fans, unbelievable. Oh, they think they hadn't won a national championship in 41 years. <laughs> oh, and they're trying to get my kids to convert at school. And I just told my kids, I said, listen, you can convert, but you're going to make your own way, right? You'll buy your own food. You'll get your own transportation. So nobody in this house convert. We are holding Diamond hands, baby. Diamond hands. How do you draw the extension lines once they pass below the existing lines? Yeah, watch. All that I did is just duplicated it. I duplicated the chart. So right click and go duplicate, right? And then it'll duplicate that plugger and you just pull it down and make sure you put the 50% line on the 50% line. And uh, you can rewatch the video. I, I went through it pretty quick. But hey, we might have to do it on the next one. Let's see. So this is the E minis, right? E minis are there. So let's go and see if we have to do that on NASDAQ or not. No, we're good on NASDAQ. So NASDAQ is, uh, we are, well, I need to draw it too. Let's do it. All right, I'll show you how I do it here. So what I do is I right click on anywhere on the green lines, right? So you want to duplicate this chart. So I'll right click there, duplicate the drawing. Then we'll drag it. And we'll drag it down. Now, this is where it kind of gets a little bit complicated, but I want to match up the dotted lines with the dotted lines. All right? So, right there. Everybody see that? How the dotted line is over that dotted line? Then hit the escape key. Ah, how beautiful. So, we are over vault for the fair value zone below, which doesn't set good for NASDAQ. I mean, this is much more bearish on NASDAQ. Why? Because NASDAQ is in an overbought condition. And an overbought condition wouldn't surprise us at all to see a drop into this 50% zone. But who knows? Because we always say, when we cover our bases, if it doesn't go up, 
it goes down. Right? It doesn't go up, it doesn't go down. I'm not even going to open the skew driver today. I'll, I'll load that uh, later. Uh, I really want to get into the spreadsheet. But let's just kind of look, see how the count's going because I don't have anything from y'all. Oh, I do need to show you what I did do today, though. Early this morning, I did a trade. So I did one order, one fill. What I did, you remember I had sold a naked three to begin the next tranche of the Sweet Bobby Hedge or the Bobby Sweet Hedge? And, you know, I sold it for $3. Hated to do it, but I needed to close it, and I closed it for eight fifty. So we're not having a bad day at all, right, with the NASDAQ. But here's the thing. NASDAQ's down 4.26%. That means that my TQ should be down three times as much, which is 12%. Let's see what TQs are down. TQ should be down 12. Yeah, it's down 11%, right? So not quite 12%. And even so, I mean, I'm down $700. Now, how did Daddy do that? Well, let's look. Let's see how Daddy did it. So we're getting a little bit of relief from our TMF, our bonds. We're down $1,300 on TQs. Um, my Sweet Bobby Hedge is picking its head up a little bit, so it's giving me $200. The micros, remember we closed all those shorts the other day, so we got a lot of put debit spreads on, so those are helping. And then finally, finally, the VIX is kicking up. So we're down $500 on the day, on the day when our primary income driver is down 12%. So it's not bad at all. Now, how did we do that? Remember that we were much more bearish on NASDAQ than the E-minis on Friday based on the support oversold, overbought conditions, uh, kind of like we are now. So what we did was we sold five covered calls. Looks like that was a great, great, uh, you never know, right? When you do it, looks like that was a great, great thing because we're up 875 on that. The entire trade's up 1150. And what did I do? I took the premium from those five calls and I bought puts. So I bought my puts 25 days out. Why did I do that? Well, I bought those 20, I wish I'd bought five, but I bought four. So I bought four, you know, 25 or 28 days out so that I can sell calls again this Friday and the next Friday and the next Friday and the next Friday. So I'll get 28 days, four weeks of selling calls uh, in this account to bring in premium, which is a great idea. And then uh, doing that against the, the long puts that I bought. So anytime we buy something, we want to sell something against it to pay for it. So I bought these for about $1,200, I think. But hey, I've made $1,200. So that's a, well, yeah, about 100% return, right? And then sold my five calls for $78. So I used the calls to finance the purchase of the puts. Isn't that cool? So that's why options give us so many options. We can buy to something and then sell something to finance it. So what I'm going to do then is on Friday, I'm going to close these down and I'll sell another five puts if I don't buy any more shares. If I buy 31 more shares, which I probably will, uh, I'm going to sell six covered calls and then I will probably buy another put. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's kind of the way hey, we do it. We're just calling about the fence. Or not. Okay. I mean, I'm glad you did. I don't even know if they're doing it back yet. Uh, there we go. All right, so cool, right? I mean, that's what options allow us to do. Op options allow us to do so many cool stuff. So that's what I did. And it was, like I said, great move because I'm down $600 today. It says I got a maintenance call of $140, but everything's fine. I took care of that on Friday. And I now have a positive buying power. So everything's good. Now, I know a lot of y'all are getting margin calls. Everybody in the mama's getting margin calls. Everybody, you know, we walked through how to handle that the other day. You can just close things out. What do you close out? Well, I close out short puts, right, that are taking up a lot of my margin. So did I like taking a loss on this? No, I didn't like taking a loss on that. But I needed to so that I could fix my little kingdom. Let's look at our, our Sweet Bobby Hedge really quick lot, just to see what it's looking like now that I close those three tranches. So let's go to ES. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something different today. You know, we always go to vol step, and we always pump it up 15%. Because vol is already so elevated, we're going to adjust this number. We're not going to go up to 15%. Vol is already increased. 
So now on a 20% move, I no longer think that it would go up to, you know, 98%. Now I'm more along these lines, 68 to 78%. So how do I know that? Just a feel. It's just, I can't tell you there's a, you know, uh, anything standard or scientific that if this, then that. But I just know that I need to make an adjustment here. So instead of 15, I'm going up 10%. Give me a much more realistic look. If we now have a 20% down move, and it's on a 20% down move, looks like I am up 64,000. Any simulations that are in there? Single symbol. There we go. Up, you know, 42 to 53,000. How's the portfolio look? Portfolio beta weighted is going to be uh, 21 to 32,000. So I've still got my doomsday hedge in place. The sweet Bobby hedge is there to help me if I need it. Now, it wouldn't have been if I hadn't closed that three uh, short puts that I'd sold. Okay, so everybody's with me. Just want to make sure everybody's with me. All right, so the main thing you guys want to see today, and people have been calling for, it, is the spreadsheet and how to do it. So, because now, if you have not entered into AIM, now's a great time to do it. Now, this is not for the weak need. I mean, if you lose sleep at night, you probably don't need to do this, especially with TQQQ. You can do it with anything you want to. This thing is designed to run with any asset that fluctuates in value. And Luchello told us that the more something fluctuates, the better it is. So ding, 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 I get the idea. Hey, let's try to run this with TQQQ. You can run it with anything. So here's the first thing you do. You go to the blank, uh, version of the spreadsheet and it's version 124.22. Okay, so I've got everything fixed in it. And the very first thing you do on this blank spreadsheet, and if you don't have the spreadsheet and you're just looking on YouTube, then make sure you get a link from me to get into our Discord channel because that's where we have everything in resources, right? So we go to the date and then we go uh, say you were going to start your program today, right? So you go 124.22. And let's just pretend that you're going to do $10,000. So this is how you started out. Your account value is $10,000. And then since you're starting today, you're saying, oh, Bobby, I didn't make a contribution. I didn't put any money into my account. Yeah, you did. You put into the AIM account the total that you're starting with. So if your account value when you're starting AIM is $10,543, you would start it with $10,543 and your contribution would be the same amount. Now, I had a, a talk the other day with a gentleman, Gerald, and Gerald's like, he was trying to keep a separate amount. Like he was like not putting his full net lick in there. He just wanted to put the amount that he's doing toward AIM. Uh, that's so hard to do. Do your entire account value, right? If you've got two accounts, can you run it together? Can you run it? Yeah, you know, or you can combine the amounts, whatever you want to do. But don't start separating out AIM money from your overall value. Let's keep your net lick, uh, your overall account value. Okay, any questions so far? That's how you start, right? So, and then every week I would go in. And so if you're starting today, maybe Mondays are your day. You can change it to Fridays or whenever, but every, you know, Monday or Friday, I would go in and change it. Now, I also have spy net lick, okay? So if you want to see and compare how your account is doing, compared to an account that is 100% spy, do the exact same thing over here. So you go 124. So this is just a pretend account over here, right? Huh? And you go $10,000, $10,000. So, so if this is only if you're going to run a spy dashboard too, so that you can compare how your account is doing with the S&P 500. Questions so far? So easy peasy, put your account balance in, whatever you start with, make sure that your contribution withdrawal equals that. Okay? All right, so now let's go to our AIM dashboard. And this is kind of cool. So you'll see here, I've got TQQQ and TMF. What you don't see is the hidden I said what you don't see is the hidden, if I can get it, I always have trouble getting it. Let me see. Let me unhide it there. Unhide. So hard to do. 
I probably just need to learn hide, uh, learn hide. Hey, if I, you gotta get your little cursor just right there to do it. It's hard for me to do, let's see. Well, how embarrassing. Mama did say yeah, if, if you grab like column B and then drag it to the left and then right click and unhide, you'll get it. Let me do it again. Drag it to the, oh, look at that. Look how good that was. Who said that, by the way? Who was that? Zach, did you use that? Zach's one of my Alabama boys. The Alabama game. Y'all remember NASCAR, the Alabama game? So what you do is you need to have a version of the Office uh, 365, right? So Office 365, so that you can put this here because I'm thinking, yeah, it's under the data tab where you put stocks, right? So if I were to, so here's where you would put any symbol that you want. So let's say, for example, we were going to run our AIM program in SPY. Then you click on SPY, you click on stock, and then watch what it does. Boom. So it automatically does that. Now, if you've got more than three stocks, you see I've got some more hidden uh, here that you could unhide. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I think I go through like 12 of them or so. So you could add stocks to your AIM program. I just run two in mine. I think that's all I need. And I'm trying to keep it really, really simple. So once you do that, so, and I, again, it's already set up for you. I'll delete that. And so then, you know, make sure that that's the same symbol layer. But then you can hide that again because you really don't need it. And the only thing that I've got here is A2 price. It's bringing in price. Now, what's this? This is cool that I did this for you. So you can change your symbols here. You've got to change them not only here if you're doing other symbols. You've got to change them here as well because it's this sale is using these sales to update the price. So let me watch, show you how it works. Now, I had a script in here that would update this every 10 seconds, but it was driving me nuts because this thing would go down here and it'd show up, it was working and it's just taking up too much resources. So what I gave you is this, the price automatically updates when you open your spreadsheet. So when you open your spreadsheet, it automatically updates. But if you want it to update any other time past that, like you want to update now, just hit refresh stock price. And, but, oh wow, 48, 47, it is dropping quick. All right, questions. Pretty simple so far, right? And it says you got 10,000 in your account. We know that. All right, so now let's say you're like me and you want to do 70% in TQQs and you want to do 20% in TMLs and you want to do 10% in cash. Well, how would you do that? Well, that's kind of cool, isn't it? So what you do, and I made these yellow, is you can say, okay, if I wanted to be 70%, in TQs, uh, how many shares would I need to buy? And it tells you 144. If you wanted to be 20% into TML, how many shares would you buy? So you buy 77. Isn't that cool? So it tells you the uh, amount that you need to go in. Now, let's say that you are not going to go all in with your $10,000 today. And let's say that you want to dollar cost average into this. Now, here's kind of a cool thing. You can dollar cost average into it as well. So let's say that you're going to say, I'm going to put $1,000 each month into this program. What's this? I build a calculator. Uh, if you've got Friday's version of the spreadsheet, you don't have it with TQQQ and TML. So I've got both here. And it uses these uh, desired percentages of your account to tell you how much you need to put in each month. So if you're putting in available monthly investment of $1,000, so 70% of that should go to the TQs, and it knows that 200% should go there. Now, what's this? If you change this, if you change that to 60%, what's this? It changes everything. I watch. Boom. So then you say, I want it to be 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Yeah, 60 20, 10. Look at that. Isn't that cool? 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Yeah. So it does exactly, it, it makes all the changes for you. But if you're putting in a thousand a month, I built Lucello's twin vest into this that tells you that you need to buy 11 shares of TQ and you need to buy six shares of TML. Isn't that cool? 
So you're actually be putting $675 in stock. You'd be putting 525 into TQs, 150 into your TML, and then a portion of that would go to cash. Now, you don't look at this again until next month when you're going to put your money in. So you'll update it again, and next month it'll tell you how much to put in the TQs, how much to put in the cash. So this is only if you're trying to do a dollar cost average. Then it'll tell you how much that you're putting into cash. Okay, so to cash, let's see. This one says uh, you're going to put 675 in stock, and that'll be these 116, and it says you're putting 325 into cash. So I made a little column that says deposits into cash account. So you need to make sure that once you finish buying your 11 and 6, it says that in cash you put 325. So you put 325 there. That's your cash account. Okay. So then next month when you open it in, do this again. Blah, 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 blah. It'll recalculate, you know, based on the current price. And, you know, uh, say you were buying less and it says 400 was going to cash. But whatever that number is, after you do the, the purchases, you add that in. So next month you'd have 725 in cash and the remainder in your shares. So it's a really, really cool way to improve upon dollar cost averaging. But the only thing you have to do is update it every month. You know, the month amount that you're putting in, if you're going to do a thousand a month, 500 a month. And then you've got to remember how much you're actually putting into your cash account. And then just keep on going down with your cash each month and it'll keep up with the total amount that you have in cash. So that if it ever tells you to buy more shares than you have available going in on a monthly basis, you can pull that from your cash account. And then you would subtract it here. You know, don't, I, I, I spent way too much time coming up with this, but it's just, it's just a cool little way if you're dollar cost averaging in to do a better way of dollar cost averaging in. But I don't want to spend too much on that because here's where most of you are going to go. Because TQQ is down a lot and you're saying, hey man, I could go in now at 70%, 20% there. So it tells you to buy 144 shares. So let's do that. Let's show what that looks like. 144 shares. So your very first purchase, you're going to go to the AIM activity tab. And you're going to go TQQQ, which is what you're putting in. And it said to buy 144 shares. So we'll go 144. Trade date would be today's day. And what was the trade price? Let's say that you bought it for 48.47. 48.47. And it automatically figures, you know, how much money. That, and again, we wanted 70%. That's as close as you can get. That's 7,000 out of your 10,000 account. Now, you got to answer the question. Is this new capital, withdrawal, rebalancing, or new underline? Yes, this is new capital into your program. So you say yes. Okay. Then when you go back to the AIM dashboard, check it out. It shows that you got your 144 shares. Boom. You are in 70% of stock so far. and your account is 30% cash, All right? Let's go back to the rebalancing. And it says you need to buy 77 shares of TML. Let's do it. TML, 77 shares, 77 TML. That's your bond, 124.22. And that price, let's say you got filled at 25.70. 25.70. And this is also new capital because you're starting your program, okay? So let's go back, see what it looks like. So now it says that you are 70% in TQQ, you're 20% in TML, and 90%, uh, so you've got cash of right at $1,000, 10%. Isn't that cool? So that's how you do it. Now, what do you do? So you need to figure out how often you want to look at your uh, program to see when you should take additional actions to buy or sell. Lachello recommended that you look at it every month. So if that's okay for you, you're nine to five, you're grinding your job, you're you know, doing your thing, and you say, man, I could check it once a month. So maybe you check it at the end of the month or the first of the month, whatever you're going to do, just be consistent. Now, I've been checking mine every day. 
you know, is that ideal? Probably not. The more I think about it, because I've been having a lot of buy signals, right, with this coming down. I probably need to look at it every two weeks, every month. Um, I'm thinking looking at it every day as I've been buying, 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 buying every time that I open it up is probably need to slow my roll a little bit and to do it maybe once a month, maybe every two weeks. But whatever you do, I'll just be consistent on it. Okay, so let's just pretend now that here we are and we're running our program. Okay, and we're going to check it every month. All right, so let's pretend. Now, here's where you don't do this. So normally you would hit refresh stock price, right? It'll, it'll, it'll do it automatically. But you and I are going to pretend that we're going out in time. So let's say it's January 24th, and you're not going to check this again until, let's say, March 1st. That's when you're going to make your changes because you're going to let – you're at the end of January, you know, going to let February go, and then on March the 1st is when you come back into the market. Let's see what March the 1st. Make sure it's not on the weekend. March the 1st is – on a Tuesday. Sounds good. So we're coming on March 1st. And let's say, y'all, that your TQQ has gone from 49.11 to 60. Now I'm just going to change it, okay? And let's say that your 25.56 has gone to 28. You're just making up numbers. What does it tell you? It tells you that you need to sell 13 shares. Okay. Well, let's sell 13 shares at 60. So you go to your AIM activity. 13 shares. Got to make it negative, y'all. Don't forget that. Got to make it negative. Negative 13. You're selling 13 shares of TQQQ. And we're doing it on March the 1st because you're going to do your account on the first of the month at $60. Now, if it's just a signal, this is not new capital. It's not withdrawal. You're not rebalancing. It's not a new underline. So you're just going to put it up. Okay. Now, you see all this stuff over here? Gerald asked me the other day, oh, Bobby, I don't know about all this. Don't even worry about this. I have turned this off. This was a governor that I put in to slow your roll a little bit. But I don't think we need it, and I've disabled it. But I want to keep all this here if I ever have to go back to it. But you don't have to do anything here. Don't worry with this at all. You just put in your little signals. So then when you do this, what's this? It'll automatically come in and it should say that you have 144 minus 13 shares. Let's see if indeed it does. And it does. You're at now 131 shares. Okay. Your overall profit and loss is 1837. And then what would you do? Well, I says that's your overall profit and loss on those shares. You would go in and you would say, uh, what? I'm at 11, 837, 42, maybe your net leg, 11, 8. 47.32. Let's just pretend. We don't really know. And then you'd say this is on 3, 1, 22. Okay. So you're up 18%. Go back to the dashboard. All right. Now, now it freaks out and it says, uh oh, sell t shirt. Don't worry, but you take the first signal and let it go. All right. So now let's go to April the 1st. Make sure April the 1st is indeed on a trading day and it's on a Friday. So we can trade on April the 1st, and let's say that this price has gone to, someone give me a price. You want to go up, you want to go down. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, I don't know, let's just say, here's your cost basis right here. See, cost basis is 47. So let's say it goes to 43. It tells you to buy 18 shares. Let's say this 28 goes to 32. It tells you to sell seven shares. Okay, let's do that. So April 1st, you're going to buy 18 shares of TQQQ. So make sure it's positive. 18 shares on 4122. And I think our price was 43. And make sure you say no. And make sure you put your TQQ here. It won't know to pick it up. And TMF has told you to sell how many shares? Sell seven shares. Sell seven at four one twenty two, and we're going to do that at a price of thirty two. Thirty two, and then you're just not rebalancing. It's not anything. Now, I'm even thinking that we probably don't even need to rebalance quarterly. 
to be honest with you. But I've got a quarterly rebalancing if you want to. But I say just let your little machine, the little cash machine run. Right? Let it do its thing. Let's don't tamper with it too much. Just let her run. So now you come back to your dashboard and you go, oh, no, Bobby, it tells me to buy seven shares and sell one. No, no, no. You took the first signal. That's all you do. You don't do anything else. Okay? Take the first signal. That's all you do. So <coughs> now it says your overall profit minus $81. Let me see if I move this over here. And I'm just guessing on what our net lit would be, but we'll say $11,775. So now you're up 17.75. Your daily profit means weekly or monthly profit was 73.32. You're running. You're up to 17.75. All right. So let's go to uh, the next month. Go to May the first. What day's May first? On that's when you're going to do your little little account. And y'all should be. So we'll have to do it on the second, right? So May the second. Let's say this TQQ just went nuts. So I mean nuts. So and let's say that this thing went to. 78 and this went down to 23. Boom. So as prices go down, your algo tells you to accumulate shares. As the uh, price goes up, it tells you to take shares off the top. So you've got a simple way. So then you go plus 40 at the price that you're buying at and you do the uh, or minus 40 at the price you're selling it at, and you do the plus nine at the price you're buying it. And again, you say no. So all of your triggers are no's here, right? All your triggers are no's, and you just keep doing this, keep doing this, putting your trades in. So, so, so simple. Now, let me tell you one other thing that we do is that if we ever have a split, we figured out how to do that, didn't we? So let's say this TQQ splits and the price goes down from, let's say, 39, right? 39, 39, and 78, right? So what would you do? Well, you'd have to go here, aim activity, and go TM or TQQQ, and you'd actually be buying 149 shares. Let's say if you did it on 2-2, and you did it at a trade price of whatever the, you, you put zero because it's split. So you've somehow got to get an additional 149 shares. And then here, doesn't matter if you put yes or no. So I just put no, doesn't matter. It's not going to change anything, yes or no. But that's how you do a split. So that, oh, wow, it looks like you're selling 174 shares, but that is not right because actually that split price will come in as $39. Okay? that cool? So you just follow the trigger once a month. Don't do anything additional. And we never we never did sell those shares and we never did buy those. But I just showed you how to account for a split. Any questions at all? Adios. I've got a I've got a quick question, Bobby. Hey, Zach. Um, is there any way that you uh, that you would recommend using or have tried using, or is there a reason why it wouldn't help um, using like a uh, a limit order that's good till canceled throughout the month to buy a dip between the you know the 30 days that you're checking in on this? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think we can try to get fancy with it. We can try to do that. I just don't know that it, it's going to improve the results. And I understand what you're saying. For, for one example, so let's say that initially you're, you're going to buy 100 shares of stock. Well, and you're entering the AIM program. Well, wouldn't it be better to sell a put to accumulate shares? So see, there's all kinds of ways that you can you can do this as well. So Instead of, you know, just, hey, I'm buying today, I'm, and it says I'm going to buy 100 shares, whatever it said, you know, sell a put to accumulate those 100 shares. Well, what if you don't get a sign at your, your strike price? Well, you close it out, roll it to next month, and keep accumulating premium that way. So there's all kind of – you could do that, Zach. I mean, I, I just don't think that I would, right? I, I like gotcha. to I, – I don't like the, these type orders out there um, – I would rather just say look, periodically, once every two weeks, once a week, once a month, once a quarter, whatever your time from it, just run. Because what I did is I ran this thing back from 2010 on. And oh my gosh, y'all, what it did. Now I know it's a big bull market, but what it did is it, it took your $50,000 or was it 10,000? I can't remember what I started with. It took your 50,000, I think. And it turns your $50,000 into right at a million dollars. 
but six hundred thousand dollars of that was in cash. Can you imagine if you took fifty thousand dollars and turned it into a million? So you've got three hundred thirty thousand dollars of TQ. You don't care if TQ goes out of business. The algo took care of itself and got you in safety of six hundred thousand dollars cash. Yeah, amazing. All right now. We know that it's the biggest bull market ever. We Everybody thinks that the market's exploding now. They think it's going to be doom and gloom for the next 20 years. And hey, it might. Hey. But all yeah. we care about is that we have volatility and we have movement in both directions. That's what we're wanting, right? We want movement in both directions. So... No. I fully believe, and Lucello said, now he didn't know about leverage ETFs, right? I, I think he died yeah. before the leverage ETFs came out. That's fine. So, no problem. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate it, man. Thanks. So, you know, he didn't know about it. He didn't know about the leverage ETFs. Could he have foreseen that it would work? I think so. You know, and I think what we're doing is is is, is pretty cool. But I, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't get too cute with it. I would just you know do my thing. Gotcha. Now, I got a little cute with it, didn't it? Because but it was a great move on my part. What did I do? I sold calls and bought puts. I basically did a calendarized call. And so far, so good on me. Who knows? But if I if I have to. What I would probably do is I would probably drop everything and just run the Lucello algorithm. So I'd probably drop the one, one, one. I could probably drop the sweet Bobby Hedge. If I had to just choose one, I think I'd let this thing run. I think I'd give it its great, 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 great shot. So that's how you run the spreadsheet. Now, we've got other things in here, right? So if you're going to do the spy net lick, you need to update it at the same time that you do your other net lick. Well, how do you know what it's worth? Well, all you got to do is when you're updating your prices, right? When you hit that little update price board, it'll update the price of SPY as well. So, you know, you need to buy, when you started, you need to buy $10,000 worth of SPY. So let me show you that. So $10,000 divided by that price. How many shares could you buy? $10,000 divided by $437.98. So when you started this plan, you needed to buy 22 shares of SPY. So how would that look? Well, I've got your SPY activity. So what I say, 40, 22 shares. So you would have gone in here on the SPY activity. And this is only if you want to compare how you're doing with SPY. 22 shares, you started 124.22, and the trade price was, you bought it at 437.98. Four three seven point nine eight, so nine six thirty five fifty six. So how much do you have in cash, or well, whatever that is? Ten thousand minus that, right? Ten thousand minus ninety six thirty five point five six. So you'd have three sixty four forty four in cash. So go back here. 360, and I'm just saying, current cash would be 364, whatever that number was, 56, all right? So, boom, chaka-laka, chaka-laka, chaka-boom. So there you are, 24, about 22. Oh, here you got to say yes, because it was a new cap. Now, let's go back to our dashboard. Now, so then every week or every month when you update yours, you need to update this as well. So what happens if this goes to, you know, four... 34. You just update your net lit. So what would your net lit be? 991256. Let's go back here. 991256. Let's pretend that was on the same date you did your other one, March 1st, 2022. And you so you update this the same time that you do your other one, right? So that you can keep up. So at that point, and you know, see the reason this goes down is we haven't updated our spy for the other two weeks or two months that we did it. But you can see during that time, you outperform SPY. Okay. So any questions on that? That's why you do the SPY activity. So what is the sweet Bobby Hedge break-even? Remember, that's where we sell three. 
and buy five, and we harvest them at 20 cents. If you're not running the sweet bobby hedge, you don't have to worry about this. But this is just kind of so you can do a break even. So if you're selling something for $3 and you're harvesting it or closing it at 20 cents, what do you need to buy your five loans for so that you're doing this for an overall break even? Here's how you do it. You go to your data tab. You go over here to what if analysis and you go to goal seek. And you set sale K2, your final P&L, to a value of zero by changing the price that you buy your loans for, F2. K2 Z to a value of zero by changing cell F2, and you hit OK. And it tells you that if you sell something for $3, you need to buy your loans at $160, harvest at $20, to have that trade as an overall break even if it doesn't act as a hedge. So in other words, you're getting your hedge on for free. Questions on the Sweet Bobby hedge. All that is is selling three at around $3, buying five, 50 points below it for $1.60, $1.50, and then harvesting those sh three shorts when you can buy them back for 20 cents so that your overall hedge is a zero. That's what I just showed you on the Analyze tab. That, the, my sweet Bobby hedges, you know, I'll be up $63,000 if we get a huge 20% move down in the market. That's that. All right, so what else do we have here? We've got a variable tab where you put your commissions in. So here's where you need to put your commissions. I've, I've got my new commission. This was my old commission. Here's where you need to put your new commissions because that's where it's pulling up. So this little thing actually does calculate my commission. So my uh, ES commissions dollar eighty two, SPX dollar twenty three, micros dollar forty seven. But really, it's it's just pulling this one eighty two because that's where I do my my sweet bobby hedge. And remember, I used to have all this other stuff hooked up, but we wanted a I mean a we wanted a spreadsheet that was lean mean fighting machine lean mean fight machine that keeps up with how many we should sell and how many we should buy and would i do quarterly rebalancing i don't think so i think i just let it run let this thing run let it tell you what to do and what not to do so if you've been scared to go into the market and to start your little program of tqqq or tml i mean what a great time when the market's down so big it's a great time to go in and buy the tqqq if you don't want to do that, you can dollar cost average in and do the uh, TQQQ, TMF, that's the two assets you want. If you don't want it to be those two assets, what do you do? Change it, right? I've got it pulling in uh, what I've, I'm doing this entire program in. So you can, you, can, you can make it do anything. So on your dashboard here, you can do TQQ, you can do UPRO, you can do whatever. And if you want to add five or six underlines, just unhide these, right? unhide some of these and, and build them out. And you'll need to, I just show me how to do that before we go. Okay. I can do all these concatenate formulas and I can't even open that up. There we go, look, yeah. So then you would go and put your symbols in. I'll show you that one more time. You put your symbol in like if you were gonna do, uh, I don't know, Apple. Right? And then you got to come here and go Apple and turn it into stock. And then it will recognize, uh-oh. I think it doesn't recognize Apple. Yeah, okay, we got to choose it up here. There. Apple. Data select. Select. There we go. Apple. Right? And then it will, you know, as you saw, it just pulls in the current price of Apple. Isn't that cool? So let's say you wanted to do Tesla. And you can just hit the stock button. Boom, Tesla pulls in the current price of Tesla. Isn't that cool? So I've got it all set. You could run it on anything. Um, so that's kind of the method of getting your spreadsheet up to date. And I'm glad that y'all out that I gave you a blank copy. So I took all my trades out. You got your stuff on it. It should take care of everything. And I'll tell you what I did. I mean, I, I spent a lot of time over the weekend because, you know, I worry about y'all. 
you got to understand, I have a huge tolerance for risk. And you all know, I got five or six kids. I can't even keep up with them. I mean, you think that ain't risky? Uh, darn right it's risky. I have a huge tolerance for risk. So my tolerance for risk allows me to sleep at night. Whereas some of you are very uncomfortable. Now, if you've been on this journey with me, you being down 20% in your account, you're flipping. Right? You can't sleep at night. So I don't want you to follow me because I I can handle it. That's that's I think that's how I got where I am. I've always been a risk taker. I take risk. I love monopoly. I take risk. I want park place. I want I'll do everything I can to spit on the dice or whatever that I gotta do to get on park place and boardwalk. So and Beth will tell you if I don't win in Monopoly, I throw the board away. Uh, she got, I, when we were dating, I remember tossing the board. And she's like, whoa, you know, I'm a competitive dude. So is that good or bad? I, mean, I don't know. But I'm willing to go for it. So I'm shooting for the stars here. A lot of people say you can't do what we're doing. And here we are trying it. So you got to, let me give you a big, big warning. You got to figure out what your risk tolerance is. Mine, if these counts go to Zippo, I don't care. Right. Well, I do care, but I'm more in it for the game and the science and the 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 algo and the hey, let's see if this will work. Let's see if we've got a great plan. And then you may not have that. You know, you may not be the scientist that I am in the you don't say I'm a gambler, but I'm a risk taker. Gotta take risk in life. So many times we keep baby in the corner. So many times we uh, wear a helmet on a bicycle. So many times we had to have a knee pad. So many times we tell our kids to draw within the line. And I'm one who draws outside the lines and I draw outside the lines gladly. Because I'm not going to do what the herd is doing. Because you look now, y'all. I mean, even Tom Shoshnoff, as Beth said, and Tony, I mean, even though they're getting a dollar every time you click the buy button or the sell button, you know, they look distraught. They look distraught. They're taking on some big hit. And they're short deltas. How about that? Here we are, long deltas and taking hits. But you can tell people are puking. I mean, they are they can't sleep. They're like, oh, my gosh. And this isn't even a huge correction. This isn't, this isn't big at all. I, mean, I, just, I see this all the time. You know, we've not seen something of this magnitude since you and I have been together. But this is nothing. This is a nothing burger. I mean, this could, this could get a lot worse. So what are you going to do? You're going to try to time the market. Uh, you're going to try to time when you start this. You know, why do that? Just make sure that you have a scientific mechanical strategy to tell you when to buy, tell you when to sell. If you think the TQs are too risky, go to something less risky, maybe a U-Pro. Or go to a double leverage ETF or just go to the Qs or the SPY if you just want that. So you got to figure out what your risk tolerance is. I don't want anyone taking on the risk that I'm willing to take on. I am willing to throw it out there and go for it. You've got to be able to sleep at night. This is not worth messing up your health. It is not messing up your health. You just can't do it. You have to be comfortable. I mean, think about how many times in your 401k plan. Have you even looked at it? No. You know, for the entire 30 years or so that I was with the federal government, did I look at it? Well, every now and then, but I kept putting money in. I kept receiving my 100% match and my 50% match. And I kept putting it into the C fund, the S&P 500. And I didn't care if it crashed. I didn't care if it go up. I didn't care if it go down. I just did it. And that's what you got. I mean, you got to have that type of mentality. I mean, if TQs go to zero, that's going to be bad timing. You know, it'd be, it'd be terrible. I don't think it's going to happen. Just don't think it's going to happen. If it does, yeah, you know, you can be a naysayer and maybe you're the one that told me so. Don't think it's going to happen. How do I know? I go and look at the top 100 companies and, well, the 102 companies in the NASDAQ 100. Dollar Tree, Costco. Pepsi, Dr. Pepper, Walgreens. I go to those companies and I go, over the long term, they're going to be fine. Now, they're going to be fine on 3X leverage. Yeah, you know, who knows? 
I believe that they will. Because at some point, when we start going back up, the old algo is going to start spitting out cash, right? It's just got to go up. So we want two-sided action. It's, it's hard to say that we want what's happening now, but we really do. Remember, I started out with, I don't know, 200 shares of TQ. Now I'm close to 600 shares. Can you imagine that going back up to 80, 90, 100, 120? It doesn't. Well, then if it doesn't, it goes to zero, and I lose the amount that I've got into TQs. Does that kill me? Good. Do I jump off a building? No. Do I walk into Walmart and hold somebody hostage and go crazy? No. Do I, you know, flip out? No. I don't do that, right? I continue playing with my goats, milking my chickens, and collecting goat eggs and taking my kids to their ball games. Doesn't bother me at all. Not going to change my way of life. So make sure that whatever you're doing into our Lachello program. Now, so what's going to happen? And I don't care which way it goes one way or the other. So we will either, either be found out to have been wildly unsuccessful three years from now or four years from now, or we're going to be wildly successful. I am banking on wildly successful. Now, we may be mocked in the short run. People may say, oh, my gosh, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's puking, puking, he's blood in the street, and the old boy doesn't care. I don't care. Because I am a, I've got this for the long term. I've got this for the long term, and I'm using science to make my decision. Any questions at all? So I hope y'all get that. I don't want any of you to be, you know, because a lot of you are having a rough time right now. And that bothers me. And that's why I went over the weekend. And guess what I did? I took Lachello's book. I had it open one minute. I took Lachello's book and I took chapter six and I started running our spreadsheet through his scenarios just to make sure it lined up, just to make sure that the same numbers that he was getting, I was getting, run through his scenario, and the algo was working just perfect. So don't take my word for it. Go to Lachello's book, How to Make a Million Dollars in Stock Market Automatically. Go to it. Go to Chapter 6. Go and unhide all of these little things here, right? And make sure the safe is right. Safe should be 10% of how much you've got in stock. So we see that's the case. What's your portfolio control? Go through his scenarios. Make sure portfolio control is calculated right. The sale and buy recommendations are calculated correctly. And, you know, you got to make sure that all of these numbers are calculating correctly. So the action tail only tells you to take action if this is above the safe. Safe tells you what you can do. So it is. How, how far above safe is the dollar amount that you should sell? Well, it's 3,094. So I went a step farther and I got it to, collect, to do something that Lachello didn't do. We've got you know, all this stuff bringing in current stock market prices and it's actually calculating the number of shares that you should sell or buy. Isn't that cool? So I think we've improved upon what Lachello was running on a three by five index card. Does it mean that there's no risk there? Doesn't mean that at all. Doesn't mean that at all. Is there risk there? Well, yes, there's risk there. So you got to assume that risk. So would I put 100% of my net worth or my investable capital into this? No. Oh, heavens, no. No, 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 no. But this is, a, this is, this is science for me. This is science, and I love it. I think about it on the weekends. I wake up in the middle of the night, and I go, is there a way to improve it? Over the weekend, I started thinking, what if we take, uh, you know, the all-weather fund? What if we make this safer? What if we put gold in it? What if we put oil in it? What if we did this? And then I went back to Portfolio Visualizer, you know, and I tried that, and I go, no, it's just not. It's just, no, no. I like what we got. If I were to make a change, I might go, instead of TQs, I might go to UPRO. So if you were starting today, you don't want the volatility of TQs, you want a little more diversification, go to UPRO. If you don't want 3X leverage, go down to 2X leverage. Uh, what is it, SOXL? Is that it? 2X, uh, 
or you can go to a 2X leveraged uh, NASDAQ that's out there too. So whatever makes you happy. Or do it on Apple. Or do it on, you know, whatever. I don't like individual stocks. I get in trouble when I do individual stocks. I think we've got a solid program. Time will take. So we're going to be found out to be uh, dumb, stupid, ignorant, or we're going to be uh, found to be masterminds. I'm willing to take that chance. Do I care if I fell in front of y'all? Oh, heavens no. Y'all, I'm, I'm sitting in my underwear right now with my belly showing. I, I, I have no, I have no, <laughs> you're not going to make me feel bad, right? Not going to make me feel bad. I, uh, I, I, I love doing this. And am I going to hide it from you? Am I going to hide if we blow out? And it, no, I'm going to show you exactly. I want you to see exactly how we do in this account. Okay. So it's, it's an exciting time for me. If you're losing sleep, you got to tone it down a little bit. You got to either uh, talk to yourself and take those little calm gummies like I've been showing you, or you got you to slow your road. Let's go to Amazon really quick, live. And let's make sure everybody knows where the book is. You got to read. If you're doing this and you're not, let's see, I did make Amazon. It's always embarrassing because you get to see my orders that I've been making. But uh, I want you to do how to make a million dollars in stock market automatic. Here's the book you need. Look at that. Right here. $12.99 on the Kindle. Paperback costs you a bunch of money. Like $173. Get the Kindle version. $12.99. This is the fourth edition, I think. Yeah, fourth edition. That's the one you want. $12.99. That's the one you want. Read it. Some of you are having trouble reading it because it's dated. He talks about, you know, calling your broker, calling to get quotes. Call, I mean, it's a little dated. But when you get to chapter six, you get to chapter six, that's where the meat starts. It's one through five is difficult to get through. Get to chapter six, he starts throwing it out. Telling you why it's an ATM machine. Chapter seven is kind of cool. Then he even increases it to where he goes 80% stock, 20% cash. I have all changed that a little bit. I'm 70% stock, 20% bonds, 10% cash. So you know, who knows? But I think it's a great, great plan. I'm very excited for it. And you want these movements. You want these movements. How would I ever have accumulated almost 600 shares of TQQQ if we're not having these down movements in the market? Got to have them. Got to have them. All right. Good stuff, y'all. So have fun. Get your spreadsheets up. You got any problem with them? You know, set it up. Let's look at it. Let's you know, try to get it set up so you can do this. This should take the emotion out of it. Remember, what kills us is fear, greed, and envy. Fearful of market drops. Why are you fearful when you've got a algorithm that's churning out saying, hey, here's your plan. Your plan is on a down drop is to buy more shares. Okay. Why are you scared when on up moves is telling you to convert shares to cash? You should not be scared. You've got, an, you've got a mechanical algorithmic strategy. Do you buy into the strategy? That's the, quest. that's the real risk. And do I want you to buy into it? I don't care if you buy into it. If you don't buy into it, that's fine with me. I am willing to put the experiment out there for the masses to see. I'm more than willing to do that. It's not going to be the first time. If it fails, it won't be the first time I fail. It won't be the first time I've blown up an account. I've blown up plenty. But I can promise you I've made a lot more than I've ever blown up. A lot more. A lot. So you will see the good, you'll see the bad, and you will see the ugly. Remember, I'm the guy who was raising goats because Cubans loved goat meat. That was me. I went and bought the goats, bought the pasture stuff, got all the goats back in the 80s or 90s because it was the big thing. The Cubans were going to keep me in business and I was going to supply their needs because they love goats. And then we started thinking, now how do we get the goats to the Cubans? That was the problem. I was the guy who bought the real estate magazine publishing company when all real estate advertising was going from print 
to the well. That was me. That that was old Bob. So it won't be the first time that I've fallen on my face. <laughs> but I've got a lot more successes than I've got failures. But I love talking about the failures. I love them. The failures make me who I am. The failures make me better. So this will prove to be maybe the greatest accomplishment ever, or it's going to be one of my many failures. I really don't care. Well, I do care. I, I care for y'all. I don't want y'all to blindly go in. That's why I'm saying you got to search yourself. You got to search. What amount of money can you put in that if it went to zero, would not bother you? That's what you got to find. And that's what you got to follow. So what a lot of people are going to do, here's why I fully anticipate is the shiny object syndrome will hit y'all because all it's going to take is for someone to get on Facebook and show you that they made $3,000 today on a zero BPE trade and y'all are out. Y'all are going to say, crap on this Lachello thing. I'm not ready for this politics. And you're going to start chasing something else and then you're going to get in a whole new group. You're going to find someone else to follow and you're going to find out of this and then you're going to lose money there and then you're going to find something else and you will spend the next 10 to 20 years searching for something else. And there's a huge probability that in 10 years, this cello thing is going to blow your socks off. We're just going to wait and see. Now I'm excited. I hope y'all are excited, excited too. Okay, good, John. Yeah, good. good Bobby, day. did we get a skew driver reading today? We did not. Let's pull it up. I bet it's, I bet it's a insane skew driver. Let's see what our skew driver is doing. Skew. All right, so let's see, 29 days or 32 days. So we'll go to 29 days. This pulls up a 20 point wide spread in the SPX. And it tries to tell us how many points away the one that's going for 520. If we can find one going for 520, is away from the market. Let's see here. Let's write 29 days. 29 days. I'm waiting for 520. Nothing's coming to 520. Let me go to the 32 days. I'll find something there. Going for 520. Nothing there. Well, that ain't close either. Is Has anyone else been able to pull a screwdriver today? Screwdriver. I mean, it's going to be over 100, no doubt. Mine's about, one, mine's about 160. 160. Wow. Yeah. Say because anything that I'm pulling up, I'm even pulling up 520. It's like I don't have enough spaces in here. So, yeah, I would say it's probably down in here, right? 145, 160. What does that mean? So, let's say if, if Rick's, I'll go with Rick. Let's say it's 160, which apparently is because there's nothing on the board showing it. So, it's it's not even. So, we go 124, 22, 160. Normally, it's between 25 and 35. And remember, it will revert back to some sense of that. Here it is. This is extreme. It will come back down. Problem is, we don't know when. It will. We just don't know when. So, and I'm hoping that y'all are really doing good, uh, you know, uh, with your psychology. The psychology is the important part here. You know, it's the belief in what we're doing doing or what you're doing to be able to hold when everybody else is panicking because they're selling you know. It's getting to a point that they're calling their 401k administrators and they're going, I got to get out of this car. Well, you got to put me in something safe. Let's go to cash. Yeah, they're selling and as they sell, we buy. That's what Lucello's aim does. When they sell, we buy. We do the opposite thing. And it's, it's just a, it's a difficult, difficult thing to do. And it's one thing to see on Portfolio Visualizer. It's, it's easy to see in a back test that you'll have a 50% drawdown. It's easy to see that and then go, oh, I can handle that. And then actually live through it. So we're not even nowhere near a 50% drawdown. We're doing fine. We've got hedges in place. We've got stuff in place. Have we got some margin calls? Yes, we have. Have I had to close some things for losses that I didn't want to close? Yes, I have. And you've seen it all. 
to have seen it all. So stay the course, get your plan together. If you're going to do aim, get your spreadsheet together. What a great time. What a great time. Do it when the stuff is down. That's when you want to get in. Now, you're sitting there saying, well, Bobby, what if it keeps going down? Well, Lucello Le and the algorithm is going to tell you to buy more. So maybe you're saying, I don't want to start off at 70, 20, 10. Maybe you want to do, you know, 50, 40, 10. All right? You do 50 TQQQ, you do 40% bonds and 10% cash. Maybe that's what you do. Or maybe you try dollar cost averaging. You say, well, okay, I'm going to put 1,000 in this month. How would that work? Well, it tells you you buy 10 shares of TQ, you buy 13 shares of TMF, and the remainder you put into cash. So you'd only be putting 675 into your shares, 325 into cash. Record your cash deposit. Don't look again until next month you put $1,000 in. Prices change. Prices change, and uh, it'll, it'll do what it's going to do. All right, great, great stuff, y'all. So you should be ready now. If you need any help, let me know. We'll schedule one-on-one, -on -one, and I will see y'all tomorrow.